Hello ladies and gentlemen, Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616, how are you? And today I wanted to talk to you about an issue that always seems to crop up when the subject of gay marriage comes along, and that is the sanctity of marriage. We must protect the sanctity of marriage. And the whole sanctity of marriage theme is a political wedge. The sanctity of marriage must be preserved. The sanctity of marriage. Won't somebody please think of the sanctity of marriage? The sanctity of marriage. Well, what exactly is the sanctity of marriage? What is sanctity in this context? I don't know because I couldn't be bothered to look in the dictionary, but I think I've figured it out. I've come to the conclusion that sanctity is a thing that exists only in things that gay people don't do well in. Right? So if gay people don't do well in something, that has sanctity. Anything that gays do well in, it no longer has sanctity and therefore fundamentalist Christians are no longer allowed to do it. Bear with me. For example, let's take the world of fashion. Now as we know, loads of bum lords go into fashion. Loads of them, they're all there, you can see, mainly miles away, screaming and mincing around. We need them. It seems to be something they're good at. This is obviously the reason why most fundamentalist Christians that you see are not the most fashion conscious, trendy looking people. They always end up looking like, well, this guy. Well, and it's not because they want to look like that, they just look like that because gays have destroyed the sanctity of fashion. This is also the reason that Christian people can't seem to dance very well. You've seen them, they're not very good. They're not the most sort of hip, they're not like this, they can't do any of these fucking shit, can they? No, they can't. That's because there's loads of gays who are good at dancing. And this is why when Christians dance, they always end up looking, well, like this guy. Point to your head. And they don't want to dance like that, but they have to. Why? Because gays have destroyed the sanctity of dancing. Music. Christian music. Christian. You ever go to a Christian music festival? You ever see Christians attempt to do hip and cool music? It doesn't work. They always end up sounding, well, like this. Rubber legs. When your finger. No. I've got to be fair there, that guy really wasn't doing the music, I can't believe him. And I don't know why, the more I watch that video, I start to like him a bit more. Yeah, but music would be more like these fuckers here. Yeah, Christian side hug. It's that, the song actually starts off, no, Jesus would have hugged people like this. Right, well, of course he'd have hugged people like this. He was nailed to a fucking cross. He didn't hug people like this because he wanted to. It wasn't group hug, no, he's nailed to a plank of fucking wood. But anyway, that's what Christian hip-hop sounds like. And it's not that he wants to sound that bad, but there's so many gays in who make good music that they've destroyed the sanctity of music. Why do you think fundamentalist Christians have only ever read one book? Well, it's because of people like Oscar Wilde, Bertolt Brecht, and Lord Byron. Well-known fucking sausage jockeys. All of them great writers. And because of them, they destroyed the sanctity of books, and therefore, fundamentalist Christians are no longer allowed to read. And of course, let's not forget the final one. Philosophy. Yes, the world of philosophy. Francis Bacon, Alan Turing, Plato. Well-known uphill gardeners, the lot of them. And because of those guys, they destroyed the sanctity of philosophy. And because of that, fundamentalist Christians are no longer allowed to think. So that's why they're so concerned about the sanctity of marriage and about gays doing the marriage thing. Because this is all they've got left. But I have to ask, where was the sanctity in the first place? If there was sanctity in marriage, then it certainly hasn't been destroyed by gays. I think divorce, separation and adultery have done a pretty good job of that. If you want to prove that you care about the sanctity of marriage, then don't ban gays from doing it, just ban divorce. And it's not as if the family values crowd has ever had a problem when it comes to divorce and adultery. Just ask one of Newt Gingrich's three ex-wives. Go and ask George Rikers what he thinks of adultery, although he probably won't answer because he was probably taught that it's rude to speak with your mouth full, particularly with cock. And the statistics and the facts all show us that the areas in America that are the most religious have the highest divorce rates. Now, they might turn around and say something, well, that's because down there in that commie liberal, fag-loving, goddamn homo states that they don't get married no more like they do in those good Christian states in America. And to be fair, they're probably right. There is a lot more marriage going on in the Christian fundamentalist, in the more religious states than there is in the more liberal, less religious states. And of course, thanks to people like Focus on the Family and many other organizations that are just havens for closeted homosexuals, anti-gay bigots, and rampant pedophiles, many of those states will not be allowing the gays to get married anytime soon. Apparently the idea of there being state sanctioned arse fucking is far too much for these religious rainbow bus warriors even though many good people have put in the work and the effort to show them with science and with numbers and a graph this is what will happen as a consequence of gay marriage as you can see there it's quite cut and dry well it probably won't be very dry 
gay marriage. You'll probably be get it. But I'm here to tell the gay people not to worry about marriage. Not because I don't want you to have equal rights. Of course I do. But my point is this. I don't want the sanctity of homosexuality to be ruined by marriage. I don't want to see gay people having to go through the same shit that all the straight people do in, when they deal with their marriages. I don't want to see you reduced to that level. I want homosexuality to be preserved for what it was. And that is staying out late, showing up late for work, going ooh at every single thing you hear, and more importantly, being there for people like me when our girlfriends need someone to talk to, a man who isn't a complete arsehole. That's what you're there for. And more to the point, think of your poor fellow religious fundamentalists who are trying to save the sanctity of marriage. Think of all you've taken away from them. Thanks to you, they can no longer dance, they cannot sing, they cannot read, and they can't even fucking think. And you, the, all they want is for you to give them this one thing, leave this one thing alone. And I ask you, do this one thing at, for your fellow human beings, out of empathy. Do for them what they will never do for you. Right? Rise above it, turn the other cheek, love thine enemy, and preserve the sanctity of gay. And to all you religious fundamentalists out there, I would like to leave you with a message that I have for you from one of your very own, Rick Santorum. Take it away. I am what I am, just how God made me. So I am what I am, I need only me. Richard Dick Coughlin, 616. Good night, may God be less.